Behold a faithful and prudent steward whom the Lord set over his household. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. And welcome everybody to our celebration of the Feast of St. Joseph. A very special welcome to all uh, our students from the various schools throughout the diocese who are part, taking part in this Mass via the, via the internet. It's really good to have you with us as we celebrate this beautiful Feast of St. Joseph. And it's in a, a, in a special period as well because the Holy Father has decided that this year we're dedicating it to St. Joseph, um, asking his special intercession for all of us and looking at his life and trying to see how he can help us in so many ways. So as we begin to celebrate this Feast of St. Joseph today, let's first of all call to mind our sins, ask for the Lord's mercy and for his forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you called your people to turn away from sin. Lord, have mercy. You teach us wisdom and write your truth in our inmost heart. Christ, have mercy. You forgive sins through the ministry of reconciliation. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that by St. Joseph's intercession, your church may constantly watch over the unfolding of the mysteries of human salvation, whose beginnings you entrusted to his faithful care. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. The word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, thus the Lord speaks. When your days are ended and you are laid to rest with your ancestors, I will preserve the offspring of your body after you and make his sovereignty secure. It is he who shall build a house for my name and I will make his royal throne secure forever. I will be a father to him, and he a son to me. Your house and your sovereignty will always stand secure before me, and your throne be established forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, his dynasty shall last forever. His dynasty shall last forever. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord, through all ages my mouth will proclaim your truth. Of this I am sure, that your love lasts forever, that your truth is firmly established as the heavens. His dynasty shall last forever. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David my servant. I will establish your dynasty forever and set up your throne through all ages. His dynasty shall last forever. He will say to me, you are my father, my God, the rock who saves me. I will keep my love for him always. For him my covenant shall endure. His dynasty shall last forever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. 
The promise of inheriting the world was not made to Abraham and his descendants on account of any law, but on account of the righteousness which consists, which consists in faith. That is why what fulfills the promise depends on faith so that it may be a gift and be available to all of Abraham's descendants, not only those who belong to the law, but also those who belong to the faith of Abraham, who is the father of all of us. As scripture says, I have made you the ancestor of many nations. Abraham is our father in the eyes of God, in whom he put his faith, and who brings the dead to life and calls into being what does not exist. Though it seemed Abraham's hope could not be fulfilled, he hoped and he believed. And through doing so, he did become the father of many nations, exactly as he had been promised. Your descendants will be as many as the stars. This is the faith that was considered as justifying him. The word of the Lord. Thanks. The Gospel Acclamation. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. They are happy who dwell in your house, O Lord, forever singing your praise. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who is called Christ. This is how Jesus came to be born. His mother, Mary, was betrothed to Joseph. But before they came to live together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Her husband, Joseph, being a man of honor and wanting to spare her publicity, decided to divorce her informally. He'd made up his mind to do this when the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because she has conceived what is in her by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you must name him Jesus, because he is the one who is to save his people from their sins. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had told him to do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. So, you're all back at school now, um, happy, I'm sure. What was the thing, most of all, that you were, you were looking forward to when you um, came back to school? Um, I wonder, was it the fact that you were going to have lessons again? Um, school dinners, perhaps? Um, homework? I doubt it very much. I suspect one of the things that you were really looking forward to most of all was that you were going to be with your friends after such a long time of being apart, that you would actually be able to play with them, talk to them, hear everything that had happened since the, the last time you'd, you'd got together. One of the things that's saddest about this pandemic is the fact that so many um, granddads, so many grandmas have not been able to see their grandchildren. And that might have happened to you, maybe, maybe because your, your gran or your granddad uh, is not so, not so well. They've not, been able to, um, they've not been able to visit you, you've not been able to visit them over an awful long period. And it's really, really put a, a big strain on, on grandparents particularly. It's been a terrible, terrible sorrow for them. I don't know about you, but very often when, when you get together with, 
older members of the family, uh, one of the first things that they, they start to say to you is, do you know, your hair is just like your granddad's hair when he was your age. And you're probably your granddad's bald, bald by now, but uh, when he was young, when he was the same age as you, he had exactly the same hair. Or uh, your granddad will say, you know, your eyes are just like your grandma's eyes. You know, that blue of your eyes, just like hers. We can't help but compare ourselves to our grandparents, our parents, other members of the family. We inherited so many things from our parents, from our grandparents, and it's not just our physical characteristics either. Um, what we see at home is the way we think the world is, isn't it, you know? And the way we treat it at home is the way um, we think we should treat other people. So if, you, if, you, if your parents treat you with respect, with kindness, with love, that's the way we tend to treat other people as well, with respect, with kindness and with love. If we're treated perhaps a little bit mean at home, uh, if we're put down on, a frequent, on frequent occasions, then that's how we tend to grow up ourselves, a little bit mean and ready and easy to put people down. So many things in our lives are inherited from our families, from our parents, and from our grandparents. And I think the same was true with Jesus. If you look at the way Jesus treated, for example, the way he spoke about his heavenly father, surely it must have come as a result of the way he interacted <clears throat> and he was treated by Joseph, his, his earthly foster father. Um, if he was able to speak with confidence in prayer to his Heavenly Father, surely it was because he was able to speak with confidence to his foster father, Joseph. After all, Joseph was the one who taught him his trade as well. He was close to Joseph. Joseph was the, the local village carpenter, and that's the trade that Jesus learned from Joseph, from being a, a young child, a teenager, uh, and, and a young man. That's how he earned his living to start with, as a carpenter. So he relied on Joseph, he looked to Joseph, he imitated Joseph in so many ways. So although we don't actually have a lot written down about Joseph, we can, we can presume, we can surmise that the way Jesus lived his life, the way Jesus treated people, the way Jesus spoke to his heavenly father, all came from the way that Joseph spoke to him and he spoke to Joseph. The way Joseph respected him, the way he respected Joseph. The way Joseph loved him, the way Jesus loved Joseph. And if you look through the scriptures, you'll find that on so many occasions, meals are important. Um, and apart from the Last Supper, which we're going to remember particularly in a few weeks' time, Meals happen quite frequently in the, in the Gospels. <clears throat> Jesus would gather together with his disciples. Jesus would gather a crowd, it says in the scriptures, of sinners and tax collectors, and he would eat with them. Meals were important. Surely that must have been because meals were important in the Holy Family too. That Joseph and Jesus and Mary would gather together to eat and to share food together. And it was over those occasions of sharing meals together that important things were talked about. Important events happened in the life of the Holy Family. I suppose what I'm trying to say <clears throat> is that although we don't know a great deal about Joseph, the way we see Jesus growing up, the way we see Jesus interacting with the world, the way we see Jesus treating other people, talking to other people, must have come as a result of the way he was brought up by Mary, his mother, and Joseph, his foster father. And Almighty God, right from the beginning of time, had decided that it was Joseph and Mary who would be entrusted with Jesus in order to nurture him, in order to help him to grow, in order to help him to become the saviour of the world, the one who died 
uh, for the salvation of each one of us. So this year, Jesus has been given to us, sorry, Joseph has been given to us in a very special way as our intercessor, as our patron. That's what the Holy Father, Pope Francis, wants us to think about during the course of this year, how Joseph particularly can help us, can help you as you begin to grow, can help to nurture you as you begin to develop, can be uh, a real patron for you and a special saint over, uh, uh, over this period as you begin to grow and as you begin to develop. I think you should have all have received um, a little prayer card. I hope so. Um, we printed out all, thousands of them out and, and I had them sent out to all the schools throughout the diocese and to all the parishes throughout the diocese. And I hope you keep these cards close to you and there's a little prayer on the back of the card and it would be great if you said that prayer yourselves. But I hope that as, as, as you come together in the classroom to, uh, to pray as a class, you use this prayer too uh, to ask St. Joseph's intercession for you. And I'm going to say that prayer now. And if you happen to have the prayer card close to you, then perhaps you can join in with me wherever you happen to be. And we'll just say the prayer. Hail, guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to you God entrusted his only son. In you Mary placed her trust. With you Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. St. Joseph, patron of the Universal Church, pray for us. Because it's a, a solemn feast today, we're going to stand and profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We turn to God in whom all fatherhood has its origin and pray with confidence as today we honor St. Joseph. Joseph watched over the Son of God. We pray for all priests and ministers who serve in the body of Christ and who feed God's people with his body and blood. Lord, in your mercy. Joseph was upright and honorable. We pray for all in public office that they may guide our people unselfishly and with wisdom. Lord, in your mercy. Joseph cared for the family of Nazareth. We pray for all heads of families and for single parents, that they may have joy in their children. Lord, in your mercy. Joseph was a simple carpenter. We pray for all workers, that they may have fulfillment in their jobs. We pray for those who cannot work or are unemployed and that, that they may find strength and courage and personal dignity. Lord, in your mercy. Joseph walked in faith. We pray for ourselves that we may know the guidance of God in all our affairs. Lord, in your mercy. 
Eternal wisdom, loving Father, you teach us profound truths in the simple home of Nazareth. May our minds be always opened to your way and our hearts ready to follow Jesus, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and this wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. The humble spirit and contrite hearts may we be accepted by you, Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We pray, O Lord, that just as St. Joseph served with loving care your only begotten Son, born of the Virgin Mary, so we may be worthy to minister with a pure heart at your altar. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and on the solemnity of St. Joseph, to give you fitting praise, to glorify you and bless you. For this just man was given by you a spouse to the Virgin Mother of God and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household to watch like a father over your only begotten Son who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Terence Patrick our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world. Free me by this, your most holy body of love, from all my sins and every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments, and never let me be parted from. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ, keep me safe. the blood of Christ. Well done, good and faithful servant. Come share your master's joy. Especially for those at home, we now make our spiritual, spiritual communion together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul, so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Defend with unfailing protection, O Lord, we pray, the family you have nourished with food from this altar as they rejoice at the solemnity of St. Joseph and graciously keep safe your gifts among them. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives.